All right, let's take a look at this fluid mechanics problem. They want us to use the conservation laws to figure out this flow right here, a vertical flow between two parallel walls. So let's see, what do we have? They want us to consider a viscous incompressible flow that is flowing between two infinite and vertical walls that are parallel. They want us to consider incompressible and uh, constant properties. We have a distance between these two plates that is h. We have gravity pointing downwards. We have uh, the axes set up right here at the uh, first wall and x is pointing horizontal, y is vertical, and they want us to file, uh, calculate the velocity profile, they want us to calculate the volume flow rate per unit width, and figure out an expression for the pressure uh, gradient in terms of mean velocity. All right, in order to figure out the velocity profile, we need to solve the conservation of momentum, or otherwise known as Navier-Stokes. And while we are working on that, we're going to call for help from the conservation of mass, or the continuity equation, to help us cancel some things out. So, from our setup here, we can see that we have a one-dimensional flow, which is going in the y direction. Therefore, I'm going to write up the Navier-Stokes equation, incompressible form for the y component okay now here's a bunch of terms that we have right and we're gonna have to cancel out quite a few of them but we need to make sure we have valid reasons to do so we can just cross them out because we feel like it okay so first up we have steady state given that means that when we look at this setup there is no change with respect to time. Therefore, we can cross out the only term in this whole equation that depends on time, the very first one. Next, let's take a look at u, v, and w. Now, like we said, one-dimensional flow. Okay, Every single molecule in this flow is heading in this direction. None of them, not a single molecule, is going towards this wall, or this wall, or for that matter, going between the plates in the z direction. None of that is happening. Only f uh, We have flow only in the y direction. Therefore, we can come right here and confidently cross out u equals 0, w equals 0. v, we can't cross out, right? We just said that we do have uh, flow in that direction, so therefore V component is not zero. But let's take a look at this guy. This one we can cross out from information that we can find out from the conservation of mass equation. Here it is, conservation of mass. We can see these three terms right away. We can cross the first and the last one out because, like we just said, we are dealing with one-dimensional flow. This will leave us with this. The change in V with respect to Y equals zero. Therefore, we can come back to the Navier-Stokes equation and cross it out. Now, mathematically thinking, when we take a derivative of something and uh, it becomes zero, then if we take another derivative of this zero, that will be just simply zero again, right? Therefore, we can go and cross this term out as well. Now, the very last term. We are dealing with a two-dimensional problem, therefore we can cross this guy out. Like we said, this is a one-dimensional flow that we are analyzing in two dimensions, x and y. Okay, Make sure you don't get confused by these, these uh, words. One dimensional flow analyzed in two dimensions, x and y. Okay, what do we have? At, at this point we crossed out pretty much everything there is to be crossed out. So let's take a look at this term, Fy. Fy is the body forces. The only body force we are dealing with here is the gravity. 
and that one's pointing downwards, right? In the negative y direction. Uh, if we look at our axis as it's set up, right? G going downward. Now make up, make sure you make a note for yourself and make up your mind what you're gonna do. If you use G to plug in, then in case you're gonna need actual values down the line, make sure you remember to plug in negative 9.81. Or you can go ahead and plug into all your formulas a negative G. And then when you have to plug in some values, then no more negative, just 9.81. So just make up your mind what you use and don't accidentally double your negatives or don't use it at all. Okay. For me, I'm going to plug in a positive G. And in case I need to plug in uh, an actual value, then I will... Uh, use a negative 9.81. All right. Okay, let's uh, move forward and clean up what we have left here. I copied and pasted right here the Navier Stokes equation with all the stuff that we canceled out. There you go. On the left hand side, we canceled everything, so all we have left is a zero. On the right hand side, we have Fy minus 1 over density times the pressure term plus kinematic viscosity times the second derivative. Now I like to change kinematic viscosity to dynamic viscosity with this formula right here. Therefore I multiply this whole equation by density. I plug in G, positive G. There you go. And let's uh, figure out a different setup. I moved the second derivative to the right, left hand side and collected all the constants and put them on the right hand side. They told us it's a steady flow, right? That means that the pressure term will be nice and constant. And we're going to take derivatives and integrals with respect to x, and this one is in y. So we can move it here and consider it part of these constants, no problem. Actually, come to think of it, uh, they didn't tell us that it is a fully developed flow. So we don't know if this is constant or not. But since we are taking in the integrals with uh, respect to x, right? And this is with respect to y. Therefore, we, it's okay for us to consider it as a constant in uh, res with respect to x's. Okay, so that's why we can lump it together right here in the constant uh, group. So, uh, what do we have here? This is a second derivative that describes our flow. So, I know it looks has a lot of terms and looks menacing, but it is nothing more complicated than uh, what we have in differentials class, where we had x double prime equals some constants, like 156 or 10 or 5, whatever. Okay? So, we need to find velocity profile, which is the V by itself. Therefore, we're going to have to take two integrals of both sides with respect to x, and that will help us arrive to V. Okay, here's the first integral that takes us to uh, the change of V with respect to x to this constant 1 over uh, dynamic viscosity times x plus uh, C1. Then let's take another integral of both sides with respect to x. And here you go. Finally, we arrive to the function that describes our v. Now, mathematically, this is the general solution of this the differential equation. Here, we uh, need the particular solution. So that means that uh, we're going to have to figure out c1 and c2, which are two unknowns for us. For that, we're going to rely on our boundary conditions. First, let's uh, take a look at this location right here. First boundary condition, x equals 0, v equals 0. We set up our axes to start right here. That means this is where x is 0, and this is where it will be h. So, up here, we have x equals 0 and velocity equals 0 because of the no-slip condition. That means that the very last molecule on, of the 
solid wall and the very first molecule of our fluid they are stuck together they are, they are no movement no movement they completely stuck together of course as we go further and further away from the walls right we have velocity that's why we have a flow but at the wall no motion no movement v equals zero now at the other side where x equals h the same thing again no movement because we are at another wall again no slip condition so these are the two boundary conditions let's go ahead plug them in we're gonna use the second equation that we have here for both boundary conditions first plug in the first boundary condition then the second one and these will lead us to find c2 is zero and c1 is equal to this big constant right here okay we're gonna take these two and plug them in to our general solution there it is and after factoring out a few common terms we can arrive to a more compact version of it where we can see that this is our particular solution for this differential equation and just in case you guys can't see it let me read it it's uh, 1 over 2 times dynamic viscosity in parentheses the pressure term with respect to y minus rho g and in the next parentheses x squared minus hx okay the next task we need to figure out the volume flow rate with uh, per unit width right okay so the formula for volume flow rate is velocity times area when we are dealing with constants but here velocity is not a constant we just found a nice function for it so that's what we need to use therefore we need to use the integral version of this setup and in order to make sure we are on a per unit width basis we're gonna divide by the width which is given as w so therefore we divide it out and we can find it volume flow rate per unit width plug in our v the one that we just found there it is our particular solution that we found a minute ago and next step all we have to do figure out this integral take out all the constants in front of the integral calculate it evaluate it we evaluating it from 0 to h right because we are going right here from this wall all the way to this wall and that's going to give us a volumetric flow rate per unit width right here h cubed over 12 times dynamic viscosity and in parentheses rho g minus uh, the uh, change of pressure with respect to y and for our next uh, task we need to figure out a pressure term but with expressed with mean velocity so for that we're gonna take the volumetric flow rate that we just calculated right here and we're gonna divide it by the length this length length of the channel or the area between the two plates so simply plug in our values the volumetric flow rate we calculated right here the width uh, the length between the two plates h plug it in simplify there it is i'm gonna move some terms around so we can express our pressure term and move all the stuff on the other side that we don't need and we can find a formula for it right here the pressure term with respect to y is rho g minus 12 vel uh, mean velocity times uh, dynamic viscosity divided by h uh, squared okay and finally to close uh, things up i'm gonna just show this uh, calculation this is the same thing what we did from beginning to end but show you uh, how the calculation will end up just in case you decide to set it up a little bit differently so 
in this setup you can see that I didn't pick my axes right here at the first one I picked it exactly in the middle and therefore relying on symmetry towards both sides right and that way I'm gonna pick H this way and H this way right so the distance between the two plates would be considered 2H okay and also let's say that you're the kind of person who wants to uh, when it comes to G since it's pointing downwards you will simply plug negative G into the formula and on the end if you would have to calculate something then you would just plug in positive 9.81 so in this case here's the problem worked out again the same thing I'm not gonna go over it step by step but it's basically the same idea what we just went through and you can see what kind of uh, formulas you would arrive to based on setting it up just a little bit differently all right well very good and that should uh, do it uh, please give a thumbs up for the video and uh, have a good day guys thank you